So here we are with Heptibase, and it's one of many new visual note-taking applications that are growing and trending in the note-taking space right now. People love this concept of combining a whiteboard with their notes, and Heptibase wants to help you to do that. So we're gonna give you a review and see whether it's suitable for you, giving you everything, including pros, cons, breakdown, and all that you need to know about this application. So to begin with, welcome to Toolfinder. If you're brand new, you can subscribe and you can also go over to toolfinder.co to explore lots of tools like Heptabase to find the perfect one for you. I'll find that linked in the description below as well as the comments to help you to find the best tool. And you can also subscribe as well. So this right in front of us is Heptabase, but let's begin with the pricing. Now pricing is fairly simple. $11.99 per month if billed monthly. And then there's a yearly pricing, which totals out per year at $107.88 pence or cents per year, which is um, reasonable in the space. Like these sort of applications typically come in, in around um, sort of $80 to $120 per year as a typical standard that we're seeing these days. Now this one is available on pretty much all device. It's on Mac, Windows, Linux. So that's all of the desktop versions, iOS and Android, and they do have a web clipper as well. So diving into some of the main features, then talking about the pros and cons, let's start with these main features. Now on this left-hand side, you have a journal area, and this is sort of like daily notes where you can tag stuff and bring in relevant items. You can use multimedia and pretty much like the others, start using this as your daily journal area. You can scrabble ahead of the dates as well here, and you can find a date in the future on this area here. Now, much like capacities and some of these other applications, you can see some of the context down below here, like the word count, the tags involved, and you can even view it as pop-up information here. Now, what's nice as well is if I go to the right-hand sidebar and I had details about this, like a page of contents or other such details, I can be able to add certain cards in here and see them alongside each other. This is great for organizing that information as well as getting uh, additional insight. Features I'll talk about a little bit in more detail. Now, one of the things you can do is add a task as a, a task item here. And over on this right-hand side, you'll see that task appears. Now, if I go over to say another note and open it up, I can open this up. And um, of course, this one doesn't have a task, but it's indicated that obviously you can associate tasks and dates to them. You can also reschedule them too, which is great for organizing uh, things for the future. And naturally, if I go to that date now, I'll be able to see that item. So obviously it pinpoints stuff uh, by blocks, which is very helpful, and also comes up with back, um, back links. And you can imagine that's incredibly helpful. So there's an area called map, and this is where the whiteboard abilities really come in. You can see that you can create these whiteboards and things can appear inside of multiple whiteboards. So this one appears inside of two areas that you can see here, and I can scroll between them, but notes can be interchanged and used again, or cards they call them, and cards can be created just by double tapping as well. Now you can add a heading and you can add some details below as if it was a document. You can open this up and have a fully fledged document type experience here, which is great. And you can also see the whiteboard it's correlated to as well as a location. Now there are a bunch of different settings here, like for example, add it to the sidebar. You can also change the color of it. You can draw a connection between one of your notes and another, or one of your cards and another, and that builds a bridge between those two. So for example, you can see that now a backlink has been created, which is really easy to deal with. There's a bunch of different customizations, including sporting and part markdown and PDF, as well as managing the tags and moving this to different areas. You can also turn it into a mind map type experience, which doesn't represent very well here, but it does give you an opportunity to see things in a bit more of a mind map type of view. Now, in all of these different whiteboards, you do get the ability to manage the um, table of contents and things like that, and be able to find all the details up here. Now, these are all very helpful for quickly um, consolidating the information so that you can make a decision, and you can also see the journal up here too. So you can also, which is incredibly helpful, drag in any item. For example, if you wanted to, you can see that this card has been brought in. So building whiteboards isn't just about notes that you create on the page, 
cards that you create on the page, but also about the ones that you can drag in too. This is incredibly helpful for research and many people find that this application does a really good job of it. Being able to open cards on this right-hand panel makes life a lot easier for those who are researching. Now you can also add custom uh, tags to each of the bottom of the pages, which gives you some more insights and properties that you might want to add to each of the notes. And that's something that you can manage and coordinate inside of each card. Now I was talking to you about tasks earlier. Now you can manage your tasks from here, meaning it's a dedicated task management area. But the real, I think the real impressive bit is the card library. And we see this in other applications like Scrintle, where you can manage all of the cards that you have across your account, whether or not they're part of a whiteboard, what type of card they are, like whether they're a PDF or a video, etc., that you've added in. And there's a great way to delete empty cards uh, easily, which I found to be a very useful feature I haven't seen in other applications. Tags can also be managed here and groups can be created for different tags. Now, each of your notes are synced to the database, but you can locally sync them as well. And you can see that this is the backup location for them. Now, of course, you can choose a cloud backup and manage all of your local location settings here. You can manage your subscription and you can see what the connections to Readwise and the Web Clipper are, which is great for tagging web content and bringing it in. Now, one thing I really like is the ability to create tabs. Tabs can be pinned, which means you can create favorites along this left-hand sidebar. So when looking at this application, I think it's important to look at the pros and the cons. I would typically say the pros of this application are that it's available on all devices. It's rare to see these applications available on a range of devices. I actually tried the mobile version and wasn't expecting much, but it was actually a really well-built reader version of this application. So being able to have it on iOS and Android is something you don't see compared to other competitors at this current time. The card library is something that only few of the visual thinking applications like this tend to do, but I quite like how they structured it. And finally, the way they've built this application is robust and easy to use, with the task management being a nice bonus for those who want to extract their tasks inside their account. Now, some of the cons that I did pick up is that it isn't the most attractive one to look at. If you compare it to designs like Scrintle or Capacities or other such applications, I think this is probably the least attractive option on the market, but maybe that's personal preference. But largely, this application doesn't tend to have a beautiful design, but has does have brilliant substance, which means the features are really, really strong. Aside from that, the pricing being sort of mid-range for these visual thinking applications does make it more important to establish whether it's right for you before you jump in because it's quite highly priced. But these sort of note-taking applications typically charging this amount these days, so I wouldn't be shocked if the price increases in the next year. But largely, it's really designed for those researchers and busy professionals that want to be able to have a visual note-taking experience. So that was my overview of Heptabase. It's a powerful tool that you can use to bring your ideas together and to research, visualize anything that you're doing. It's a reliable application that doesn't look fantastic, but does the job, which is the most important thing. Whiteboards are a powerful feature inside this experience and they're fairly easy to use as well. And the experience is very robust. So if you're looking for all of those things, I would recommend Heptabase. I'd recommend also looking at some alternatives before you dive in, and that's where you can go over to toolfinder.co to explore all of the note-taking apps that we have over there. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this helps you find the right visual note-taking application for you, or note-taking app, and we'll see you in a future video. Cheerio, folks.